Hi, in this tutorial, I would like to introduce you to the material templates that ship with Mari Extension Pack 5R3. When you first open Mari with Extension Pack installed, you will notice that you get some installation messages and Mari will install a new shell for you called the MEP material presets. In here, you find blank standard materials for the different shaders that ship with Mari. These standard shaders are pre-authored material templates that have the most common settings exposed and allow you to easily start authoring your material. You can, for example, add images to the different slots, you can transform things, and you have a variety of control. Apart from different shader models, we also have different presets within a shader model. For example, usually you have a 3D and a UV-based version. So the 3D is a triplanar-based version, and the UV-based version is a tiling version. For the more complex shaders, such as the Arnold one, the V-Ray shader, as well as the Pixar surface shader, we also have additional flavors of this material. So for example, for the Arnold one, we have a complex and a reduced version, and the complex version has a lot more options exposed, while the reduced version kind of focuses on just the most important ones that are more common in a PBR workflow. Apart from being available within the Mari shelf, these presets also appear within the Mari Material Ingest tool. So under Tools, we have the standard Material Ingest tool, which allows you to create automatic materials from files on disk. So for example, if you downloaded a material of Megascans, where you have a substance material, this way, using this tool, you can automatically create materials. Under the Material Templates, you have access to the different presets that are also available in this shelf. So if I select a preset, I can automatically ingest maps, so images, directly into this material. So I will end up with a material that looks exactly like my standard material, but is already pre-authored with the images that are part of the material on disk. We will get to that later in this tutorial. Before I show some examples of these standard materials in action, let me do a quick recap for beginners of how to work with materials inside of Mari. Materials are based on a shader model. So usually you will have to create a shader, such as for example the Arnold shader or the V-Ray material. Under the lighting, I also have some additional shaders that come with extension pack or in this case come with Render Man. If I create, for example, an Unreal Advanced shader, in order to use this shader with materials, I will need to assign channels to it. So for example, if I want to use the base color in my material, I create a new channel, I set my resolution, etc. And I repeat this process for the other channels. You can use standard presets, so you don't have to always do this, but this is not really part of this tutorial, so I would advise you to search a little bit in the Mari help for that, because you can easily create a standard project that already has all your channel assignments. If you're in the node graph, you can also create channels using the Mari extension pack, create channels for node tool, and there's a separate tutorial about that one. Usually what I do when I author these materials or when I want to work in a material workflow is I create my channels and I disable the slots of the shader that I will not use. For example, by default, the displacement will be deactivated in all shaders, and I can also deactivate the vector slot, the emissive color, etc. We take a look at the Arnold standard surface that I already pre-set up. You can see I have a lot of channels already assigned that I automatically created with the node graph, create channels from node tool, and then I went ahead and deactivated the different streams that I know I will not be using. This is a small performance optimization because this way Mari will just have to evaluate a lot less inside of the shader. Once you have a shader set up, and have your channels assigned, then you're ready to use the materials in a layer workflow. If I go to a channel, so I'm now in a channel that is assigned to the Arnold Standard Surface shader, you can see all of these icons appear, and I can toggle, for example, a stream on and off for this material. If you click directly on one of these channels, you will jump to the channel that is assigned to it. So here, I'm currently inside of the bump channel, which I call BUP. So this is my naming convention for my bump channels. If I click on the diffuse color, you notice 
I jumped into the diffuse color channel. If I take a look here in the channels palette, I'm now in the diffuse color channel. So this is the Mari way of jumping around inside of the layer stack while having a single material that sits inside of all these channels. Now in order to use this workflow inside of the layer stack, all I have to do is drag in a preset into the layer stack. It doesn't really matter in which channel you are because the channel will propagate across all the different channels that are assigned to the, cha to the shader. So let's drop this in here. And now I end up with a new blank material that I can author to my preference. So let's do something with this quickly. I'm not going to use any images for now. So instead, I'm just going to set a diffuse color. You can also have U control. I'm going to change this to metallic. And I'm going to quickly assign a roughness map to this. So I'm going to go to my images, find my specular roughness, and I will just assign a grunge map that I will call from the grunge shelf that also comes with extension pack. So I'm just going to click on one of these and by clicking on it, it will automatically get loaded into your image manager. And then I can just drag it in here. And now I have this map assigned. Obviously it's scaled too big. So I will step to my transform control. So I have transform triplanar and transform UV in this case, because it's a triplanar version of this material. And then you can change, for example, the world scale. You can also set your cursor inside one of these fields and just use the arrow keys up and down and change the scale this way. So you have a lot of transform options here, also about for the UVs. And here we have a simple standard material. You can also add these standard materials directly via this add multi-channel layer button. So if you click here, go to materials, you see under the MEP material presets, all of these standard materials also appear. So you don't need to always drag and drop them directly from your shelf. Let's take a quick look at this material within the node graph. So here I have the material that is associated to this layer, to this R node reduced 3D. And if I open the node properties, you will see the interface here is a little bit different from the layers interface. So here all the controls are spread out over several tabs. The main controls are under the material tab, images are in a separate tab, and the transform controls are also in a separate tab. Now you might be asking yourself, what happens if I have a triplanar version of a material and I want to convert it to a UV based or tiling version of this material? To do this, we're going to use the node and layer swap tool. So in the node graph, you select the template and you right mouse click and go to swap node type. The swap node type usually shows you other Mari nodes you can swap for, but when you have a material template selected, it will actually instead show material templates. So here you can see I could swap to a different material template. The same also works in the layer stack. So if I select my layer here, right mouse click, go to swap layer type and present it with the different material templates. So here, for example, I could swap this 3D um, Arnold reduced version to a Arnold complex UV. So double click. And it's not going to be that, that fast because it needs to convert a lot of data. And here we are. You can see I now have the Arnold complex UV preset instead of the triplanar version. And everything has been transferred as good as possible not just as good as possible, but fairly accurate. Um, one thing also to mention is that using this method, you can actually convert in between shader models. So if we go to swap layer type, you can see I not only have the Arnold versions available, but also other versions. So obviously there's gonna be some conversion back and forth between different model types or different shader types. Like the shader types won't exactly look 100% identical necessarily but the tool will try and do as much work for you as possible. In the last part of this tutorial, I want to show you an example where I ingest directly into a material preset. I also want to point out some limitations of the material ingest tool and how to work around them. As you've seen earlier, I can choose all these presets directly in the material template dropdown. If I choose the Arnold reduced version, so I'm gonna pick the UV version, 
the shader model updates correctly to Arnold standard surface and I get all the available streams that are exposed in this preset. As you can see here, some of these streams are disabled. Because I'm using the reduced version, these streams are not included in this version. If I go to the complex version, you see now I could, in theory, ingest an image into any of these streams. So this is the main difference between the complex and reduced versions. Let me go back to my reduced version. Now I want to ingest some Megascans materials that I've downloaded previously. The way the ingester works at the moment, at least, is that it will ingest any material found in a folder. So unfortunately at the moment you cannot directly specify which of your materials on disk you want to ingest, which is why in my case I created a subfolder where I put in the two folders with materials that I want to ingest. Because otherwise, let's say you have a Megascans library of several hundred, hundred materials, Mari would go through the entire library and batch ingest all materials. I'm going to choose the Quixel preset which is equivalent to the Megascans preset. As you can see, my naming patterns have been adopted to conform to what is usually exposed by Megascans. When I start ingesting a material, Mari will check if it can find the appropriate file for a stream. If it doesn't find a file, it will override it with its own color. Now this is a good workflow in general, however, if you're using already a pre-authored material template that is already set up the way you want it, you do not want Mari to override settings with its default options. So unfortunately at the moment, you kind of have to be aware what kind of images are part of the materials that you're ingesting. So for example, for the Megascans materials, I know that I have usually no diffuse weight, I don't have a metalness, and I don't have a specular IOR, no specular color, no specular weight. And I also don't want to use the bump map in this case. So usually I press Ctrl A, right mouse click and uncheck all, and then just select what I want to ingest. So again, specular roughness, displacement, normal. And that is basically all I need. However, I usually also assign my ambient occlusion to my diffuse weight and to my specular weight. Now, if you want to preview your ingested materials, how they're going to look, you can switch the ingest method to just display the search result. Now, if I do a find materials, Mari will preview what it can find on disk in your material folders. So here you can see. I have a map against the diffuse weight, which is my AO, the albedo, spec weight, color, and roughness. The same applies here. Double check my settings, and I'm going to turn my ingest method to build materials in project. Create materials, and Mari will go ahead and build these materials for me. As you can see here, I now have my two materials created. And if I just create a blank new Arnold standard surface shader, and then just attach this material here, everything will be auto connected for me. And you can see my material has been ingested correctly. I'm going to go to my shaders and I will just Activate the displacement. And it's going a little bit crazy. So first off, I'm going to switch to another default object. Let's go back to my shader palette. So that was the wrong one. Let's go to the Mari surface tab and check our settings. So these are settings that always appear for my Arnold standard surfaces. So you can see I have a high tessellation and some other settings. And I usually save this once so just by right mouse clicking and saving a shader preset. So this way my Arnold standard surface will always comes in pre-configured like this. And now just for performance optimization, as I mentioned earlier, 
I usually go ahead and disable streams that I do not use, such as emission, opacity, the vector. I do not use a bump map in this material. I do not need clear code. No subsurface. And I can also deactivate all the fancy specular effects, and that is all I need. Now let's take a look at our material and tweak this a little bit. So I'm going to go into the displacement, change the intensity a little bit. To make this look a little bit be better, I'm going to turn on my shadows. Let's see if we have a light active that is casting a shadow. You can see that here. And also, you can obviously use the extension pack hotkeys to rotate your lights. So this is now rotating both the environment light as well as the point light. So your shadows will change as well. Now we can do some more modifications. As you remember, I've ingested the AO into the diffuse rate. So I can remap this, for example, a little bit. I can also go to the specular and remap the roughness a little bit. It's a lot more muddier. Let's bring the intensity down a little bit. And one nice little feature of these pre-authored materials is, for example, that they have an auto scale. So usually if I were to change the repeat, let's say I increase the repeat to five, the material becomes quite spiky. However, if I turn on the auto scale option, the material will stay exactly the way you authored it, regardless of the repeat. So you can see the relative depth of the features will stay constant. Some other nice features. All the new blurring options of extension pack are also available in these materials. So for example, I could go in, in and blur the normal map a little bit, just to make it more in line with this more muddy effect. You can also blur things globally. And there are a whole bunch of different options available. So I invite you to play with this a little bit. And that is the look at the material presets and I think they will be quite helpful to give you a head start when starting to author your materials and all these little uh, workflow issues such as, for example, the ingester. This is already something I've been talking about with the, with the Foundry. So hopefully in the future, for example, you won't have to deselect things anymore and you will be able to choose which presets to ingest. But for now, as is the case in Mari 4.6, these are the workflows you have to employ if you're using the material ingest tool. That's it, and I hope it's useful.